How is it that a restaurant that only does chicken strips has been rapidly expanding all over the United States and even into the Middle East? And how did the person who came up with this multi-million dollar business get started when he had no money and no funding? Well, it involves risking his life in Alaska to catch salmon and trying to prove his business professor wrong who told him the idea would never work. This is the crazy underdog success story of Raising Cane's. So in this video, I'm going to try to break down the intro sequence you've just watched. This is specifically for the people who are here to learn. In this first part, I've decided to just put the first two scenes. Here we do have scene one. It is a simple scene where we have particles being our first layer. Then we do have another layer which is a structure or a building and then another building then another building and this is going to be our main building and then lastly we do have the sky you can notice that we do have it moving these layers they are all 3d objects so i'm going to toggle this switch here to view the entire scene setup or the composition from above so for this i've pushed the video of the clouds at the extreme end and then followed by the image this image you're seeing right here is the image of one of the stores then the rest of the images they are side by side one is on the left and the other is on the right so there's nothing fancy it is as simple as that what i did actually i just uh, added tint effect and also the levels effect i mapped black to black but then i mapped white to yellow that's why this image every part which is white it was turned to yellow and for the next image the parts which are supposed to be white they were mapped to red that's why this side is red also added another effect which is levels so what the level is doing is trying to add some contrast so what you're looking at here is the camera's field of view but then also have a layer here which is cam control this is actually a null object sometimes i usually prefer using the null object to animate the camera movements because sometimes just animating the camera may get a bit weird so when you look at this and i open up keyframes you will see that the camera is only controlling the rotation and then what the null object is doing when you look at the keyframes you will see that the null object for it what is doing we are trying to animate the z space and that's this space over here that's why when i'm moving it towards the back you will see it is the only values that are moving the camera can also do the same thing but then i sometimes prefer using the null object to do different things so that the camera in case there is some weird movement i don't interfere or i don't interrupt the movement which i already made with the camera also the reason why we try to parent these you can't control the camera when it's not parented because this creates a relationship between the null object and the camera so up here we do have another layer which is wiggle it's creating that bit of camera shake we don't want it to be so smooth to an extent like it looks robotic when you look down here we are seeing that our camera now is also parented to the wiggle this camera is controlling the camera and this camera is controlling everything which is 3d in this entire composition but then we want to create another relationship because it will also be the same relationship which will affect the camera and also affect the rest of the layers so that's why we've decided to use the camera control to create a relationship between the wiggle inside wiggle we do have our frequency being 20 and our amplitude being 2.5 so we do also have the particles so when i tap here you will see it also has the same effects we had for these three layers we also mapped white to red that's why the particles are red and black to black and also we decided to add more levels and show more particles so we have to activate motion blur to everything that is moving plus we do have this other layer which is the VHS overlay which ties everything together. So basically that's how the first scene went. So for scene number two, we also have the VHS overlay. So this is like the universal overlay for everything you're going to see in this video or in this breakdown. We have the fire sparks, we have the frying pan, it has no background. We do have the text or the word. And then lastly, we do have the image of Raising Ken restaurant. Starting from behind, you're seeing the image of the restaurant. Inside it, we do have the tint effect and we have the levels effect. So this levels effect is the one which is controlling the contrast. This is what is controlling the color and now camera lens blur. So followed by the word chicken strips. So when you look at this, you're seeing that chicken, the word just shows itself. Uh, for this, I used an effect called typewriter. It is having just words, not later by later we go here down in advanced and instead of characters we try to use words but then in the text we do have effects effect number one is drop shadow and a third party plugin which is the 
quick chromatic aberration which is creating this RGB split which you're seeing right here. The next part is a frying pan. There is nothing fancy about the frying pan. It is just a, a drop shadow on it and then with a hue and saturation. But then this layer, what it does, it's just increasing the saturation so that these chicken strips look yummy. Here we also have the fire sparks. Originally, they're not glowy as this. But then since we added a glow effect, that's why you're seeing them glowy like that. Also decided to put their blending mode to screen so that black is transparent. So for the animation, unlike the first scene, we only have now objects. So when you're using the now object without the camera, you have to actively parent the camera to the objects. So what we did, we had to go to each and every layer which I want to control with this now object and then I look for that particular now object and then I parented it to it. Basically, camera 2 is controlling the rotation and camera 1 is controlling the position. As camera 1 is zooming out or moving backwards, camera 2 is rotating. Also, we do have wiggle. It is the same wiggle as I explained earlier, but then for this, the values are slightly different. And also, you will need to apply the motion blur to give it that actual look of movement and make it believable to the human eye. I guess I'll see you in the second two scenes.